Now, I don't know what's going on in churches these days. You notice there was a huge increase in atheism? What? Atheists are... They were either closeted, like they were hiding somewhere and nobody knew about, or suddenly everybody's turning to, you know, atheist or agnostic. But if you ever sit down and you talk to these atheists, like what made you, you know, no longer believe in your God, they always will tell you it's moral corruption in the church or in the mosque or in synagogue or temple or whatever religious place it is. They would see people acting one way while preaching about the sins of that same way. And the kids, you know, they they grow up and they just sort of you know they become confused they're like well why is this allowed if we do it but not somebody else to do it you know there's an old saying something like uh what is it do as i say not as i do something like that what else going on in churches these days and I'm not Jewish, I'm not a Muslim, I'm not Buddhist or Hindu or any other religion. I'm a Christian. So for me, my viewpoint is within the Christian faith. And I'm seeing that in, in a lot of churches, the devil has now infiltrated the churches. And what I mean by that is churches used to be about salvation. People that were sinners that no longer wanted to be sinners was allowed in. Or even some people that were sinners and they're like, okay, you know, come on in and maybe the word of God, you know, light a little fire under your butt and get you waking up, you know. But now churches have abandoned a lot of that. Now churches want people to donate them lots and lots of money and do lots and lots of free stuff for the church. And a lot of these people, particularly, and like I say, I'm only talking about you know Christianity, but it probably the same in all religions I mean the people that are in these churches that you know do a lot for the church or donate a lot of money they're having that sort of Napoleon complex or or like a Julius Caesar sort of complex where they feel like they're the second in command to Jesus Christ or they're the secretaries to God himself. And, and a lot of times these people are not the preachers. These are members of the congregation. And the preachers are letting this happen. Um, someone was talking about in the Methodist church, he's a Methodist, but he was talking about, you know, in, the, in all the branches of Christianity, Catholic or Protestant, he said, he said that the two major things that are destroying the churches now is pedophilia and snakes. As he calls them. He said in the old days. Churches frowned down upon. Gossip. Now you got people sitting around their little cliques. 
gossiping about people that ain't there. People with money in the church are bragging about what they got instead of helping those that don't have what they have. And this this is becoming more like you know a high school you know high school cliques and bullies and all that rather than a place we a person felt safe you know my grandmother talked about in the old days used to be you could go to church and feel safe and she's not talking about like shooters and Nothing like that. She talking about like you could go to the church and the people will welcome you. Not welcome your wallet. Not welcome your volunteering. But welcome you as a brother or sister in Christ. And they welcome you into the church and they help you out and understand your issues. Whatever it is, they they help you out. Well, nowadays, you know, you go in the church, they'll welcome you on that first date. If, if, and this is depends on the church, if you come across the right ones. But after a while, people won't have nothing to do with you. If you say, no, I, I can't sing, I, you know, I'm on oxygen, I can't get up there and perform in the choir then they don't have nothing to do with it. If you ain't got any money to donate, they're not gonna help you out with anything. And it's sad because there's a lot of old people that still go to church. Because, you know, that's something they've always done. They you know, they worry about their souls. And these old people they go to church and you know they got grass that growing practically up to the door they have you know leaky roofs they have uh, broken water heaters you know they have you know uh, old rickety uh, outside stairs or porches or whatnot that is dangerous for them to be walking on. And they can ask the church for help. And the church is like, well, we're out of funds. We ain't got no money. Well, we got bad backs. We're too busy. We can't do it. And then somebody can, you know, donate them a lot of money. Maybe $100, $150 a week. And say, oh, I got a little creek. And one of my deck uh, floor panels, or whatever you call it. And the whole congregation will stop what they're doing, run to that person's house and fix it. Or they say, I need somebody to mow the grass. Oh, I'll do it, I'll do it. And they're like, no, you're supposed to help those that can't help themselves. There shouldn't be people old people at a church shouldn't have high grass lawns. They shouldn't have leaky roofs. They shouldn't have uh, fallen rotten out termite infest or whatever you want to call it. Um, steps and porches and all. Yeah, they shouldn't have that like you shouldn't go to a church and and see somebody with a lot of money having the congregation volunteer to wipe their butts and to repaint their house and repave the driveway while the poor older people the disabled people are sitting around when the house practically falling in they shouldn't they shouldn't have that but they do that now in a lot of these churches. A lot of these churches are allowing these 
snakes, as my friend says. You know, a snake is somebody that is sneaky. A snake is somebody that is two-faced. You know, a snake is somebody that will look you look dead in the eye, smile at you, say they love you, and then as soon as you walk away, go, oof. You see them nasty toes you got? Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. And that wouldn't be just one person in church. It'd be several. If there's somebody at your church that ever since they joined or ever since they've taken over, if people suddenly quit going to your church, and a large amount. You're supposed to start going, okay, why? Okay, why is this person starting church? It's been to church for a year now. Why do I have 10 members of my congregation already quitting? And they don't want to say why. It ain't, oh, I gotta, oh, I gotta move, or, you know, oh, it's on the other side of town. I can't. You know, see at night, so I can't go as much. No, I mean, like, they just don't tell. But, you know, like I say, there's there's just terrible things going on in the church. And outside the church, too. <laughs> but the churches are allowing this. The churches are allowing people to disrespect each other. Talk about people, oh, they lazy, they sorry, they're no good. They go around and, and, you know, if you come from, I don't know about other religions, I don't know about churches up north and all, but in small towns down here in the south, people will say, oh, if you never got married, or you don't have a boyfriend for like, you know, a year or two. They go, oh, he's gay. Or, oh, she's a lesbian. I know they're a lesbian. I know she's gay. I know he's gay. I know. They're sorry, no good people. I went to her house, and let me tell you, I swear to God. I saw her laying in bed with another woman. Or I saw him laying in bed with another man. And like you never been by their house for a year. How do you know what you saw? You didn't see nothing, you know. But these people are going around. These snakes. I don't even call them people no more. Cause they, you know how you can get around some people and there's just like an evil aura on them. Like you could be the happiest person on earth. And these people come around and it's like some invisible force. It's trying to suck your soul out. Like that much evil just trying to drag your soul out. You're like, mm-mm, mm-mm. No, 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 no. My soul, when I go, going to God, and there's going to be judgment for Him. You ain't getting my soul. Mm-mm. And, um, you know, like I said about these snakes, they... You can just feel it off of them. Like in their eyes, you can just sense evil. And these people are just... Yeah. They go into church and they spread that poison. They go in there and they find people just like them. Maybe they find somebody that don't like you or they don't like that individual. And they team up with them up. I don't like that person at all. Oh, I know that person. I went by their house and they had pentagrams all over the wall. They're Satanists. And they never don't even know where the hell they live, you know. I've seen stuff like that. And I hear people say it all the time. I became an atheist because this and that was going on at the church. People ain't turning their back on God. 
per se. They're turning their back on God because of the teachings that these people or that these snakes are doing. If you weed out the snakes in the church and y'all stop looking at the almighty dollar or the number of hours a person spends in a church then you will find that congregations will come back but the churches you know nowadays churches want money they want they want to keep up with the Joneses if that makes any sense you know you'll hear yeah, churches want big mass of congregation like the mega churches I would never go to a mega church I don't care what people say they can call me crazy they can say I'm mean or whatnot. I ain't going to a mega church to me mega churches are not real churches the football arenas with you know under a mask of a fake church like a Saturday Night Live skit you know, it's a look a lot church like a made up church and um you know like I said it's just the churches want to be like that. And they want dozens of people. They want tons of money. You know, preachers want houses and fine suits. And, you know, preacher wives want designer duds and Gucci and Prada and all that. While the poorest member of the congrega congregation ain't got a thing in their house, ain't got food. But, you know, they want to be the mega churches. No. Get these snakes out of your church. Get them out of your temple. Get them out of your mosque. Get them away from these kids. And stop. Stop giving excuses. Stop transporting them to other other uh, churches. If somebody's been accused of molesting kids, investigate that. Get the cops, investigate it. If you got like a half a dozen or two dozen kids going, that preacher molested me, have that preacher's butt in jail. Don't move them to another church. You just allow on that poison to spread. Get these snakes and these pedophiles out of the church and get the church back to its purified ways. And like I said, I I speak in regards to Christian churches because you know I'm a Christian and I've witnessed that's going on within the churches of my religion my religion churches but the same thing going on in the mosque going on in temples synagogues you know, tents wherever people are having their their church and you know you've got to Stop trying to turn these churches. Stop attending these churches. I should say. That act like mega church. Or act like the jo uh, Jim Jones cult. And stop trying to turn your church. Into a mega church. Or a Jim Jones cult. Purify these churches. Teach the word of God. Or Allah. Or Buddha. Or whoever, Jehovah, whoever you want to call them. Teach people how to do right by the sacred text. 
Stop looking at worldly goods. Stop looking at. Stop looking at you know the. Uh, do as I say, not as I do. Get these snakes out of here. Get these pedophiles out of here. Baptize your church. And if there's enough of this corruption and snakes in your church, then, you know, exercise your church. Get an exorcist in there if you have to. I wish I was joking, but I'm not. Get these churches pure because deep down in my heart, I know that one day, it could be tomorrow, it could be a hundred years from now, but one day, we'll never know when, but one day, big man's going to come down here and he's going to start kicking butts. And unless you want your butt kicked by a man with a foot the size of Canada, you need to get yourself right with your religious deity and start treating people with respect and love. And I'm talking about everybody. Whether they're part of your religion or not, whether they straight, gay, bi, trans, whether they're, uh, you know, whether they're Democrat or Republican, leftist, rightist, leftist, wait, leftist, right, wingers, whatever you, whatever that equivalent is. Start teaching to love each other. And exercise these demons out of here because it is getting too, too much. It's, it's horrible. It's getting to the point well, like if you look at the world around you, we are living in the book of Revelations. Right now, we are in Revelations. We're not in Genesis. We're not in, uh, you know, Peter or any other disciple, John and Peter and Mark. and No, we're not in those sections. We're in Revelations. We're waiting for the seven seals. We're waiting for the four horsemen. We are at least halfway through Revelation. If not, we're on that, you know, end chapters. We're somewhere towards the end of the uh, end of the book. Because, like I say, we are living in. We are living in the age of Revelation. From the book of Revelation. You look around you and you see evil. So much, so much evil. Just pouring into the streets. People are killing babies. I'm not talking about abortion. I'm talking about people are literally just walking up to cars and shooting people in the cars. With or without babies in the cars, they're shooting at the babies too. People are killing people over handbags and hair and shoes. People are killing people over People are killing people over the fact that they went to certain restaurants and, you know, certain stores and, and certain uh, fast food places that doesn't correspond with their beliefs. People are lying. People are cheating on their spouses and Cheating on taxes and governments and cheating life. You know, people are, you know, it's terrible. People are like, people are, um, 
Mm. There was a story, several stories that are popping up where people are lying about serious stuff happening to them. You know, people are faking cancer and people are faking hate crimes just so they can get money and attention. That's terrible. You know, women and women are faking rape claims and abuse claims for their selfish needs. We're telling people, we're telling men when it comes to mental health, oh, just man up. Instead of sitting down going, bro, what? Talk to me, man. What you need? Tell me what's wrong. And well, let me give you a hug, man. Just talk it out. Ain't no shame in crying. Just talk it out. We've gotten to the point where what was once condemned and I'm not talking about you know race relations or LGBTQ relations. I'm talking about cannibalism and and people getting away with beating people up. Beating old people up, beating disabled people up, beating babies. Like it gotten to this point now where morality has gone out the door. And we're letting everything in. And Satan, whether you believe in him or not, there's an evil, evil entity that is out there. I call him Satan. I call him the devil. I call him Baphomet. Whatever you call him. But there is an evil force that's out there and it's taking our young, taking our naive, taking our spiritually wounded people and just absorbing them and telling them, do whatever you want. You want to do drugs and kill people? Go ahead. You want to steal you want to steal from your grandparents? Go ahead. You want to cuss out your mom and dad? Go ahead. You want to have sex with everybody? Go ahead. And little by little, the God's army or Allah's army or, you know, Jehovah's army, whatever you want to call it. The ones that are fighting this evil entity is struggling. And soon, it's going to be that final showdown where there's going to be people over there that's joined Satan's army. And they're going to see what's going on over here and what's going on over there. And they're going to say, hold up. This is not what I signed up for. You know, I don't want to keep doing this for the rest of eternity. I want to go over there and save lives. I want to go over there and help people. I don't want to be selfish and narcissistic and evil and nothing like that. Well, it's too late then. You know, you didn't sign your soul over to the devil in a heartbeat. Because, you know, he wanted that new pair of shoes. <laughs> well, by then, it's too late. You got the four horsemen of the apocalypse coming down. Scrolls are opening up. You got angels and the trumpets and, you know, hellfire and brimstone and little Satan devils or whatever. 
whatever your inter religious interpretation of hell and its minions are. They're all coming after you, and they're like, "You lost out. Now you're a lost. Now you're not a lost soul anymore. You're just a lost body. Your soul now belongs to the devil." And all that he promised you, you found out is real. And the devil likes to lie. The devil likes to tell you things you want to hear. So he can get you. And we don't need that no more. We need to step up and say, Be gone, Satan. Go away, devil. Whatever your people call the evil forces, go bye-bye. Shoot. Get away from me, evil. My heart and my soul belongs to Jesus. And God himself, I want to go to heaven when I'm going. I know I'm going to heaven. Because I believe in the love of Jesus. I believe that God is the father of me. Spiritual father, not biological. I know a lot of people don't. <laughs> They're like, wait a minute, that ain't your daddy. <laughs> But no seriousness. When I get to heaven, I don't want to see. When I get to heaven, I don't want to find out that people I cared about on earth and down there in hell because, you know, they wanted that new flat screen TV. And that ain't worth it. So what we need to do, we need to exercise these churches. Chase the snakes out of there. Baptize our leaders and our minds. Go back and treating others with love and respect. And stop trying to separate. That's Satan's doing. We need to get back to the heart of what our religion is. And that's love and respect of ourselves and others. Goodbye. <laughs>